PowerGen International and Nuclear Power International 2010 are both well underway in Orlando. We had a keynote session this morning that included four keynote speakers. We had Terry Michalski from the Savannah River National Laboratory, who spoke about modular nuclear development. We had Susan Tomaski from American Electric Power, who talked about very critical issues related to transmission. David Fiorelli from Tenasca, who talked about clean coal technology developments that his company has underway. And, and Rene Umloff, who's the president of uh, renewables for Siemens Energy, who talked about initiatives that his company has underway with renewable energy. If you look to all the announcements regarding wind turbine manufacturers, everybody is now here in the States and supporting the business. That will create definitely jobs, green jobs, and that will bring the whole industry forward and drive the cost down. Competition is very good for cost down. I'm here with Brian Irwin, who's the director of the Advocacy Center for the U.S. Department of Commerce. Brian, thanks for joining us. Tell me, why are you here at PowerGen? What's your role? Uh, thanks, David. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, the Advocacy Center, part of the Department of Commerce, sits at the intersection, really, of commercial diplomacy and our U.S. exporters. And why I'm here is this is a very important sector uh, this administration has determined. And given the demand for a lot of the products that the folks have here out on the floor, we wanted to be here to see what we can do to help all of your constituents that are here win public international contracts overseas. And this is about driving business and driving jobs to U.S. companies. Exactly. What we do is we do a national interest determination analysis, my group that is, uh, and when we find that uh, this is in the national interest, that carries a lot of weight overseas when one of our senior government officials uh, calls on another government and says this particular company, them getting every full consideration available is within the U.S. national interest and that carries a lot of weight overseas, uh, so much so that we've been able to generate for our companies, much like the ones that are here on the floor, 20 billion in revenue for these companies this year alone about 14 billion in U.S. export content. And we judge that that have supported roughly 74,000 jobs this year alone. We hope to continue that good momentum. That's why we're here and we're looking forward to talking to any and all folks who are interested in our service. Great, that's all good news. Good luck as you're working out on the floor. Brian Irwin, thank you very much for joining us today. You bet, thank you. Brian Wheeler has been taking in the sessions at Nuclear Power International. He covered the mega session that took place today. Brian, can you give us an update? Thanks, David. This afternoon during the Nuclear Power International Mega Session, we heard Philip Moore with Highbridge Associates say that small modular nuclear reactors, those under 300 megawatts, are a global hot topic, and they will continue to be as the public's interest in energy continues to rise. Also, this morning at the keynote session, Dr. Mikowski from the Savannah River National Laboratory touched on the benefits of the small modular reactor, such as deploying them in markets where large reactors may not work. Although, he did say it is not a competition between large reactors and small reactors. During the mega session, we learned that in the U.S., the Obama administration has requested $38 million for the development of the small modular reactor. Pre-application discussions for several designs are in the works, and the NRC expects to receive the first application in 2012. Trade group the Nuclear Energy Institute said the deployment of the first small modular reactor in the United States is expected between 2018 and 2020. The International Atomic Energy Association expects between 49 and 97 to be built by 2030. Tomorrow, we will have more from the conference at Nuclear Power International. For now, we'll send it back to you, David. We'll be back tomorrow with more coverage from PowerGen International and Nuclear Power International. You also can keep track of us during the day through Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter accounts all online. For Power Engineering Magazine, I'm David Wagman.